Hi everyone, I'm Erin McIntosh and I went to the art supply store yesterday and stocked up on some new watercolors. Mary's an Italian brand. Um, I've used their polycolor acrylic before, which are lovely. I got an intro set of five that comes with, um, let's see, Quinacridone Lake, uh, Payne's Gray, Green Gold, Ultramarine Deep, and Cadmium Yellow Deep. So this will get me started and then I went ahead and bought a, um, more pigments that I wanted to test out. I like to have at least a warm and a cool of all the primaries. So um, this Quinacridone Lake has a little bit of a purplish uh, undertone to it. And I've got a Rose Lake, which is more of a magenta, and then Pyral Red, which is a more orangey red um, for yellow to complement um, the Cadmium Yellow Deep, which again leans more orange, more, more warm. I got cadmium yellow, yellow, cadmium yellow lemon, which leans a little more cool. And as far, I did, I mean, I can mix greens, um, of course, and I, I got a green that is a green gold, which has, you know, again, a lot of yellow in it. Um, and so green. the set comes with ultramarine blue. And I also got cerulean blue, which is really nice for skies. And then a cobalt turquoise and just, you know, heed the warning labels. Uh, cobalt, you know, be careful around cobalts and with uh, cadmiums and other pigments uh, like manganese that, that are toxic. And I just, you know, good rule of thumb is to treat all your paints as if they were toxic and then you're good to go. And I got a couple of neutrals. Well, the set came with a Payne's Gray and then I also got Burnt Umber and Puzzoli Earth, which is very similar to um, like a Burnt Sienna or a uh, Venetian, Venetian Red. So here we go. I'm getting ready to test out my paints. I um, have this palette that I typically use, but as you can see, it's rather full. And I've just cleaned up some of my smaller metal palettes. I usually have one for cool and one for warm and colors. I'm gonna start by making a pretty simple color chart just to get a sense of their transparency and opacity. Also wanna get a sense of if they're a staining or non-staining color. Um, okay, so I'm laying out my cool colors on one, one palette and I'll lay out my warm on the other. So I am gonna be mixing on this larger palette that has pretty good size wells, good surface to mix in. And hopefully my camera is aligned so you can see what I'm doing. I'm pretty, uh, still feel very new to this video thing, so bear with me. Um, and I can be a little clumsy, so <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Um, all right, so I've got the ultra, ultramarine blue deep and I'm just dabbing it with my brush. My brush is damp, um, working it into a nice wash. I'm gonna have this one be fairly concentrated so the color is pretty strong. And actually before I go to my paper, I'm, I always keep a paper towel handy so I can blot to take away some of that moisture. Um, and usually I have a test sheet. I know this is, I'm making a test sheet, but I have another, usually another test sheet, just so I, I, you know, can anticipate what the wash is gonna look like when I apply it to the paper, or before I apply it to the um, paper. So, and since this is all, watercolor is a lot about moisture control and, um, you know, using, the, the white of the paper, diluting the paper, or diluting the paint in order to create your lighter values. Um, it is, you know, sometimes it's just a little hard to tell when it's on the palette. So at first it's just a light wash. Okay, I like that. Um, I'm also getting a feel for this brush. This is, I haven't used this one in a while. I actually haven't used it, um, much at all. It's a, it's a nice brush. I paid more for this brush than I usually pay for brushes. Princeton Neptune series. It's a one inch flat. Um, it's really soft and seems to hold the paint. Well. I, I do blot 
just to get rid of some of the excess moisture. And you can see how much this excess moisture on the brush, um, if I'm trying to go for a really flat wash, that excess that at the end um, creates a run back or a back run, um, which sometimes I use in paintings and some, sometimes you want them and sometimes you, you don't want them. So learning, you know, which brushes, uh, you know, how much water the bristles hold, all of that stuff. You, you get a feel for your materials over time. So you're making a color chart and this is gonna be a useful tool uh, throughout your paintings and get just good handy reference. So we'll end up writing on them and making notes of, you know, each pigment as we go.